coming from myself, my workbench, and Neelix's butt. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> what? What's wrong? <laughs> what? <laughs> he is naughty mod. He always gets naughty mod when he's on here. I don't know why. So today what I'm gonna do is iron out the few kinks which my retro set has. Now you will remember that I have a breakout cable that I plugged in last time uh, to the BVM and it it is the um, the S video and also the composite cable and I was I wasn't really sure about the breakout cable you know, it's just very cheaply made and it kind of you know if, if I'm using high quality cables it's just gonna render them redundant <laughs> you know there's no point then is there <laughs> so I did try it and yeah long drilled I was actually quite right about that it was really bad the signal was just like really bad it wasn't it Neelix you remember seeing it it's the six year anniversary for PCBY and next month there will be gift giveaways on their side as well as larger coupons and other six year anniversary goodies be sure to check them out PCB Way do high quality custom PCBs, single and double sided, as well as both surface mounted and through hole assembly with a fast delivery service. Now then with regards to this RGB to component adapter by JS Technology, I remember showing it in one of my past videos. I can't remember if it was one of the BVM, you know, I'm not sure which one it was, but I did show a comparison between the RGB and the component output. So what I'm gonna do here, I wanna use this, this box here. Also, I'm gonna mod this. I wanna add a breakout on this box. I wish to put an S video and also composite outputs on this. You know, just getting them from the directly from the SCART here with decent wires and so forth. Also I can at least have a decent breakout cable with this. That's the only problem with having a PVM or a BVM. You know, you have to have breakout cables and it's really annoying. So this is my solution for it. So first let's open this out and have a good look inside there. Okay, so we open this up and we just see mains transformer. The actual input here. Output there. Okay, I can very easily add extra thing. In it. I'm not gonna do it here, just above it. What I'm gonna do is um, probably put it across here, the side, or something like this. Because um, if I do it too close to the thing, you know, if I'm, it's hard to kind of put a input there, a giant scarred input there, plus two beads there. I mean, I guess I could, but it would just weaken this this top part here, and I don't want it to snap. And it'll look but but. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna put it over here at the ends or possibly here so the pinouts for the male connector this is the female connector or the socket and the plug which is the male connector um, this the pinouts for the male one I'm assuming well I'm figuring are gonna be the same as if you plug it in here and you get the solder side of the female connector the solder side of the socket so you have pin one on the bottom left pin two on the bottom right pin three is upper left pin four is upper right and that's it so we need to get the SCART connections under this so we can have an S-Video breakout. And of course the same with the, um, the composite breakout. I've used it already in something else. 
So there we go, thinned and cleaned up. Okay, so luminance ground is pin 17. So let's actually count pin 17 from this. This is one, two, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That is pin at the bottom there. Okay, so let's double check on continuity. Okay, so that's pin 17. So that is Luma ground. Let's tin that. Okay, so we have all the wires uh, soldered. We have Luma, Luma ground, then the green one chroma, and the blue one chroma ground. Now then, you will notice that I've done this as yellow. That is because when I'm going to do composite as well, this composite, this is actually not just Luma for the S video. It's the it's also the composite output, and that's going to be composite ground. So it shares, you know, one of them. That's the thing with the S video. I mean, I can go on about this for quite a while actually. Uh, S video is, you know, it's got Luma and Chroma separately. Now this one has got Luma Chroma in one. You know, it's like it's a composite of Luma and Chroma plus the sync. So it's got like that's why it's not as good quality. You know, these are separated. RGB is the you know the even more stage which is separated. You know, it's got um, RGB and the sync, and that is a composite sync. <laughs> it can get confusing because you know, of course, composite sync is a composite of H-Sync and V-Sync, <laughs> you know, so it's the, you know, it's a composite of those things. But don't get it confused with Sync on Composite, which is, <laughs> which is, you know, uh, Sync on Composite video. <laughs> yeah, okay. Sorry, I couldn't resist. <laughs> it's, it's confusing, but once you get your head around it, it's fine. <laughs> you start understanding everything. <laughs> done here you have the luma and chroma plus luma chroma ground going into the s video port here this output here and then you have the luma and the luma ground going into the composite port here so yeah you have it all wired up now let's test it so what i'm going to test first is an rgb source and this is my rgb source no not neelix <laughs> And my beautiful Amiga 1200 behind him. Now the S video source, or the S video source, it's uh, basically Luma Chroma output <laughs> um, because S video wasn't around when um, the Commodore 64 came around. So Luma Chroma output. That's going to be the Commodore 64. Okay, so the the S video input or the BVM. Finally, there's the composite input. So firstly, the RGB, we have the Omega 1200. And you can see Neelix in the reflection. <laughs> okay, I need to sort that reflection out. There you go, I'll sit here. <laughs> we will sort it out. Anyway, so this is the RGB. As you can see, it's working beautifully. Actually, it seems to work a little clearer than before. Well, definitely, because the stupid breakout cable was, was not doing it any favors. Nice sound tracker here. Mm. <laughs> so let's now check out the Commodore 64, which is on the third. This is what I love about the SCART matrix. You know, it just it has everything that I want, including a freaking remote control. So I can just like change the inputs like that. So when I change the input of the the SCART matrix, what I'm gonna have to do is actually change the input on here. To select it to S video here. So that's number two. You can assign those with whatever you want. That's the good thing about BBMs. So we have the Commodore 64 here. 
So here we have how everything's connected. We have um, keeping the grounds out of the way for now. You have RGB and sync. So red, green, green, blue and sync. And then you have a Luma Chroma here. Now Chroma connects to red. It comes from red and Luma comes from sync. You know, obviously the sync pin. So it's used, you know, as more than one thing. I wish it didn't do that. You know, it just, I wish everything had its separate pins, but you know, that's how it is. And then you get a composite here, which comes from the Luma, you know, so it's like a daisy chain sort of thing. Uh, so yeah, that's how it's all connected. Now, I had a bit of an issue connecting it like this. Um, because the chroma comes from red, when I connect the the S video cable into either the Commodore 64 or the you know whatever else like the Amiga CD32 or anything else that you know does sync. The red I noticed that the RGB loses a bit of red. Now this is why I really wish that they would have done you know the Luma Chroma on the separate pins. I know they're trying to like save pins and trying to make it compact as possible, but it's annoying. <laughs> Now you can see here it has a lot of blue there. You can see the edge of that is blue and also the top of all this and the edge of the top bar there. It's got a lot of blue there. You see there on the edge there's a lot of there's a lot of blue and the red is a bit duller. So what I did between the red and the chroma is actually put a variable resistor in here. From here so what you can do is you can adjust you know the between the red and the chroma now here you have the grounds the blue ground green ground red ground sorry the freaking i think neelix sat on this at one point so you know some of the things are like rubbed off like this yeah. now the grounds they are i mean they're dedicated yes but of course if you use a continuity tester you know they will have continuity but it's always best to use the dedicated ground, like use blue ground for blue, green ground for green, and so forth. I mean, it reduces a lot of noise. If you were to use, let's say, for example, video ground for blue, green, and, you know, all the grounds separate, you'll get a lot of noise. So just, you know, keep the dedicated grounds. And uh, yeah, the same with everything else. But yeah, that's basically the pinout. That's how I did it. Um, I keep this resistor in, actually, I need to put the 500, um, variable resistor will be, you know, good for that. Right, so we're here and I've opened this up with the variable resistor there, the 500 ohm one, um, between red and chroma. Now, if you were to plug this in here and also be careful because it's live there. <laughs> so, be really careful with this. Now, if you notice already, it's um, with the chroma connected, it has the Commodore 64 connected. So if I were to go to the what you call it, um, RG, uh, S-Video. Put it on the Commodore 64 input, the S-Video one, and you'll see, you know, the Commodore 64 there. So, of course, you know, there's a bit of an, there's a bit of an imbalance. This seems to have a lot of chroma. So, that which is a good thing. The fact that this has a lot of chroma and then there's the red missing on the other one means that it needs balancing out. So, you see there on the edge, there's a lot of, there's a lot of blue. And the red is a bit duller. Just up there. And I adjust this. And you see that corrects it. So now that we've done this, we want to check the Commodore 64. We don't want to compromise either system, you know, too much. A bit on the dull side, so let's increase the um, This is when the Amiga is blue. You see there's a lot of color, a lot of chroma on this. Then the Amiga's right, it's a bit. So actually that seems just right. Now I'll put a little leeway in so it doesn't become too much. And I think that's it. So let's switch it back to the Amiga. I think that's perfect. Perfect balance. There we go, that's the Commodore 64 working nice. A 
Someone's definitely getting comfortable. This video working beautifully. The best track on this for me. See, everything works fine. Actually, way better than before. That stupid breakout cable was just a bottleneck, you know, for the for quality. That is, it just, yeah, it, it wasn't good. <laughs> now everything just feels much better. So anyway, that's all for today. Thanks so much for joining me. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks so much for your likes, your shares. Do leave your thoughts in the comments below. Don't so forget to check out my other videos and do subscribe for more. I would like to say a big thank you to all my patrons for all their support, especially to my top tier patrons Electronscape, Axel Dominator, Rich Garboot, Camel Tech, Stephen Leary, and Chris Sabalinski. Your support makes a huge difference and means a lot.